Today's episode of The Bitcoin Show is brought to you by Mt. Gox, mtgox.com and BitPay, bit-pay.com and Meze Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com and Cablesaurus.com and bitbrew.net. Hey gang, and welcome to The Bitcoin Show, episode 36. So glad you're here. Um, Today we're going to talk about this uh, ongoing drama of MyBitcoin.com. Obviously, um, people know what's going on with MyBitcoin.com. And uh, after seven days of going into uh, deep, dark hiding and absolutely incommunicado, they suddenly reappeared with a website explaining that oh my gosh, we've been hacked. So be that as it may, they uh, have uh, offered to return 49%, exactly precisely 49% of your Bitcoins. Uh, But what you have to do is go and fill out a claim form. So uh, in this episode, I want to actually go through this process because it's very important that you do this. People are getting back 49% of their Bitcoin uh, about 24 hours after they fill out this claim form. So um, I, I just want to do a real quick episode to teach you how to do this. It's very simple. Um, what you do is go to mybitcoin.com. And as you can see on my screen here, uh, mybitcoin.com now has a link at the top. Uh, if you want to show my screen, it says, file your claims here. Okay, the top link says, file your claims here. And if you see it right here. And you, all you do is click that. And then you're going to go to this thing. It's called, uh, let, me, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. It just says, My Bitcoin Claim Form. And as you can see, it only asks for three things. Username, password, and Bitcoin address. All right, so um, again, this is for my non-technical people. Um, if, you, if, you're, you know, if you're already a technical and you, you're whatever, you know how to do this yourself. But um, you want to get your Bitcoins out of MyBitcoin.com and you're not sure where to put them. Um, here's what I'm suggesting. There's a couple different sites. One is uh, a fairly new e-wallet site called Vbanco. I'll switch over to that and you can see it. Vbanco is a trusted, um, I mean, I trust them for, you know, if it's, as long as it's reasonable, like somewhere between pocket change that you would carry around and um, just, um, you know, I don't know, maybe less than a month's income, I guess. Anyway, somewhere in there, I, w- I would say definitely they're trustworthy. Um, for at least that much. So Vbanco is one site, um, and then Mt. Gox. Obviously, Mt. Gox is the, uh, the market leader Bitcoin exchange site, and we're pretty f- familiar with that. So I'm going to just show you how to create, because in order to do your claim over here, you need a Bitcoin address. So if you don't have one um, and you're non-technical, I'm going to show you how to actually create one. If you go to Vbanco, which, by the way, is V, like Victor, I, B-A-N-K-O, vibanko.com. All right, that's what this is. Now, you see there's a login uh, at the top, but it's so, so, super simple. You can actually just um, uh, go down here to register, and I'm going to use the name My Bitcoin Claim at. Um, I cr- I'm creating a totally um, temporary email account just for demonstration purposes. Okay, uh, Mailinator, I don't recommend you use that. And then uh, a password, obviously. You want to use a really long, secure password that doesn't spell anything and the numbers are not dates or anything like that. And actually, the email address goes in the bottom and the username goes in the top. Okay, my Bitcoin claim. And I put in a password, a long, secure password, and this email address, and I hit register. And there it is. Never save passwords in your browser. You know better. Use KeePassX. Look at the episode we've done in the past about KeePassX and um, use long secure passwords. If you can remember your password, it's not a password. (laughs) Okay. Good secure passwords cannot be remembered. All right. So anyway, basically that's it. You're registered. You see how easy that was? I literally put in a, a, a login name and a password and an email address and I'm in. It says here, successfully registered. 
you see over here is my name on the left, that my username, and then I scroll down, it says my balance, zero, of course, and then I have a unique deposit address, and um, I withdraw is simply putting in an address and amount and hitting send. I mean, it's, it couldn't be easier. So literally, if I double click on that uh, unique deposit address, they call it, and I hit copy, right click on it and hit copy, and I go over here to the claim form and right click paste, um, and then I put in my actual username and password for my Bitcoin and hit file claim, I'm actually going to complete the claim. And that's how you would do it. It's as simple as that. Uh, you complete the claim form on mybitcoin.com. Now, um, before I do that, though, I want to show you another alternative. Besides VBanco is Mt. Gox. You may or may not already have a Mt. Gox account, but I'll show you how to do that. This is MTGOX. And um, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. And then in the top right corner, I don't know if you can see that, you click sign up. Um, if you don't already have one, super simple. Oops. Uh, let's see. I'm calling it my Bitcoin claim. Is my username and password. Super super long secure password. Uh, use keypass X. Remember, we're not talking about email anymore. We're not talking about access to documents or something. We're talking about money. Okay. So uh, I'm. I created this temporary little email address just for purposes of creating a new account to demonstrate. And boom. Okay, now Mt. Gox is a little bit more, one more step. There's a confirmation that they have. So I'm going over here. This is my, um, again, don't use Mailinator. This is just uh, um, an example uh, sample email address. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I guess I will get a confirmation eventually. But anyway, <laughs> you get the idea. When I get a confirmation uh, email, I'll click it and it'll automatically put in the confirmation code. Now once I'm logged in to Mt. Gox, on the left hand side over here you see these menus. That's where you're gonna have a button called Add Funds. And you simply click Add Funds and then scroll down and you will see uh, a Bitcoin address. I don't see that email showing up anytime soon. I don't know. Anyway, you know how emails are. Well, anyway, that's the idea, <laughs> okay? So you simply go over here and click Add Funds. You're going to get a Bitcoin address, and it's going to look just like this one that we got at Vibanco. And again, you right-click Copy on that Bitcoin address, and that'll be the address to add funds to your Mt. Gox account. Paste it in here. Make sure, like, hit the Home key. If you hit the Home key, uh, it'll take you to the beginning. And make sure you see it begins with 1P89 in this case, ends in TM63. And just tab back over there, take one more look, 1P89 ends in M63. That's how I do it, to make sure that I really have the right address. I, don't, I didn't accidentally put the wrong address from some clipboard um, from something else. And then I put in, um, you know, whatever my user uh, name was, and then whatever my password was. And I literally hit file claim, and that's it. Boom. Now it's going to tell me that it's an invalid password. But anyway, you get the idea. And that's, that's all there is to it. Um, there's, they say on here that uh, claim process will be completed once per account. Claims are, that means basically if you screw up, um, you're, you're done. They're, they're not going to give you more than one chance. So please make sure the Bitcoin address that you provide with us is valid and not another My Bitcoin provided one. The claim process can only be completed once per account. They're not going to, they just can't be bothered to do it more than once. Absolutely not. Um, it's too inconvenient for them, apparently, to deal with the claimants. Um, claims are manually reviewed and will be processed within 48 hours of being filed, is what they're saying. And the claim report, they say, the claim form will remain online for 30 days. So that's what they're saying. Um, people who have filled out a claim have received 49% of their funds back. Um, I am happy to report that I filled out my claim form immediately as soon as I found out about it on the, the large account that, that, that Ed and I have. And I did get 49% back immediately. Like I, as soon as I filled out the claim form, it was immediate. I think, and actually I think I did it right away and I, I'm pretty sure my claim form was like number 6,100 something. So obviously that tells me a lot of things. Um, number one, there's many, many, many thousands and thousands of accounts affected. They're probably, and you know, most of them probably did not even bother to do this claim, actually. Um, they might not even know, you know, people don't check their email for 30 days or whatever. They don't even know that this is down. They don't check their My Bitcoin balance every month, you know. They could go months without, without even remembering to look at it, much less to find out this news. So if they're not on top of it, they might not know this is even happening. 
I'm assume, I'm, my guess is there are probably hundreds of thousands of accounts on MyBitcoin.com. MyBitcoin.com was registered in April of 2009. Remember, uh, Bitcoin was invented and in, in actually uh, launched the Genesis block or whatever. It was January 2009. April 2009, MyBitcoin.com domain was registered. And I think it was June or July of um, 2009, MyBitcoin.com went online. And so it's like one of the oldest institutions in Bitcoin land, one of the, with the old time original players. And uh, so therefore, you know, the other piece of information we know is that when Mt. Gox got hacked, everyone knows there were over 60,000 accounts. And Mt. Gox is a relatively new player compared to MyBitcoin.com. So it stands to reason that MyBitcoin.com must have had at least twice as many accounts as, um, as, my, as Mt. Gox. That's my assumption. It had 100,000 or more, 100 to 150,000 accounts is my assumption. Um, however, uh, as you may know, they have had um, a standing situation. I don't know if it's a policy or a business model or whatever you want to call it, but the standing situation has apparently always been on mybitcoin.com. If you forget your password, you lost your money. Um, simple as that. There's never been a forgot password function. So if you screwed up and forgot your password, or you think maybe you screwed up and forgot your password, basically if you, lock, if you locked yourself out of your account, there's just no way to retrieve it. Um, for a long time, uh, they were, you were able to send them an email and they were replying, you know, like up until maybe November, then they stopped having any email correspondence with anyone as far as I know. Then um, the other thing is they instituted this insight communication method this email within the site. So basically you have to be logged on to, hear, to communicate to them, which is very interesting strategically. Why would you have to be logged on to file a complaint about not being able to log on? Well, maybe because they don't want to hear from people who can't log on. If you can't log on, you can't complain. Simple as that. We only want to hear from people who already have active accounts and are logged on. Um, if you can't log on, you can't communicate. So what people were doing was creating another new account just so they could send them a, a message. And sometimes they were getting a reply, but in recent months, over the last, actually several months, I don't know, at least three or four months, people were reporting just absolutely getting no reply, no communication at all. And then obviously we know what happened in the infamous day of uh, July 29th, um, as of something like July 28th, all withdrawals that were uh, claimed to be processed that said, yes, the withdrawal happened, um, just never happened. And then um, now, okay, so then the site went down on July 29th, deep, 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 dark, incommunicado hiding, absolute deep, deep hiding, no communication with anybody. It's not like these people don't know how to communicate. They know how to communicate. They're all over the internet, the forums, the IRC and all that. They know how to communicate, but they, not a peep, not one sound from these guys. And uh, then, um, of course, you know, we did episode 33 of The Bitcoin Show where I explained the FBI Cyber Crimes Division has been in contact with me and uh, they're investigating, you know, the situation. They're asking a lot of questions and they ask that you contact them. You know, if you go to uh, FBI.gov and click contact us and, um, and uh, especially the New York offices who contacted me and tell them it's the mybitcoin.com is the case that uh, you want to report about if you've been a victim. And uh, so anyway, when I reported that, um, you know, and then of course the, the tons of uh, community members formed this IRC chat channel called, you know, hashtag Bitcoin dash police. And they have been in there 24 hours a day sharing news and tips about this whole incident. They even created a wiki where they can commu uh, communicate and, and uh, compile all the information that they were able to come up with and uh, hashing all this out. Well, all of this happened within that seven day period. And I'm sure that uh, the My Bitcoin posse um, got a bit concerned, shall we say, and um, suddenly, boom, like magic, they reappeared seven days later and put up a web page and said, oh my gosh, we've been hacked. We've been hacked. Oh my gosh, you know, we were victims. <laughs> so, and uh, we'll figure out how much money they hacked. And, and so first they said there was a, a flaw in the Bitcoin network itself. And then later the story changed and said, oh, no, 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 not that. Uh, it's actually that um, fractions, that's it. Fractions of Bitcoins were shaved off because um, 
uh, oh yeah, that's it, we were not getting confirmations. We were, we were actually processing claims on only one confirmation and not, not more than one. We were only waiting for one confirmation. And, um, you know, all these stories and so on. And, but, and, and, we, and also we have done, which by the way, like I don't think anyone who knows anything about Bitcoin technology, not anybody that I've asked. I mean, I'm the top, top, top technical experts in Bitcoin believe that that's possible. Um, especially with one confirmation. If they had said they were doing it with zero confirmations, maybe, but even then, extremely, extremely unlikely. And then to say that half of the money is gone, first of all, that half the money could be gone that way. First of all, that half the money would be live online in live wallets. That's absurd. Nobody who had any sense would do that. And these guys are very technical. They know better than that. To have 100% of the funds live online, or even half the funds live online. Nobody who's running an e-wallet would ever think of doing that. And these guys definitely knew better. And then to say that uh, not only all the funds were alive online, half of the funds were stolen before we even noticed. And, um, and, and it, all these funds were stolen by fractions, little tiny fractions of Bitcoins. And then the miracle of all miracles, that when they actually tabulated their bookkeeping, they discovered that the hackers it's like by divine intervention, the hackers actually stole 51.0000000000% 000 of your funds. So it, you know, by, by little slivers of Bitcoins, when they added it all up and they did all that tabulation, they came up to, you get 49.0000000% of your money back and we get, or well, I'm sorry, the hackers uh, stole, that's it, the hackers stole 51.0000000% of your money. It's just amazing. What are the chances? What are the odds? Somebody who's, who's really good at, at statistics, tell me, what are the odds that you could steal thousands of a fraction of Bitcoins randomly over a course of time, however much time that is, and it would actually add up to 51.0000000%. Okay, what a coincidence. I mean, it's just amazing to me. So <clears throat> anyway, basically nobody believes what they're saying. I don't, I don't think anybody who has any understanding of anything believes it. I mean, some people are appeased because, you know, let's face it, people are easy to socially engineer. You know, if, if I say to you, you know, first of all, if the facts are, Bitcoin was doubling and tripling and even quadrupling in value in, in a span of a week. There's a whole period when Bitcoin value was going up, 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 right? And, um, you know, when you say you get, um, you're going to get half of your money back, it seems like, well, okay, at first it's shocking and it's devastating and all that. But then you look back and you go, well, look, I invested this many dollars and now I have Bitcoin that's worth this many. Well, it's not so bad. And people are so easy to just forgive. Uh, like, forgive and forget. Okay, well, I was robbed, but at least the thieves returned half of the money. You know, what is that? Like, what are, what are people thinking? So, anyway, I have been, um, you know, advocating that, obviously, people do the claims as, as fast as possible. Um, I've shown you how to do the thing. They say that uh, the form will be online 30 days. Um, the form is online. Um, I'm still trying to figure out if anybody has received a, um, any, any money back since Thursday because the, the last report of um, an actual refund that I have heard from was Thursday the, the 11th. Like around, it was filed around 10 p.m. on Thursday the 11th. And now today is Friday the 19th. So um, I'm a bit concerned actually that um, they have maybe, they, they've kept the form up but they've actually uh, stopped refunding I don't know, but uh, wouldn't really be surprising at this point. The other thing is that um, the balances that seem to be reflected, when people have, all the people who have done a claim, and they put in their login ID and password and so on, it gives them a balance. And apparently, this is an old ledger balance. It may be up to two or three days prior to them shutting it down. So all the funds that were deposited into my Bitcoin in the last two or three days just don't even show up in that ledger balance. And um, any withdrawals that they made uh, were, were spent and they were, re, re, you know, deducted from the balance, but they were actually never sent out. 
So, um, and also another thing is many, many people actually have forgotten their password and lost access to their pass to their account, you know, over the two year period where that money has just basically been confiscated by my Bitcoin. In effect, they've just kept that money because they lost your, their password at some point. And another thing, okay, my, uh, when Mt. Gox was hacked, a uh, very interesting thing happened. You know, people are so easy to manipulate. You know, it's just amazing how you can trick people. Um, Mt. Gox was hacked. Of course, my Bitcoin was notified. Uh, like every, every e-wallet and exchange site, of course, was immediately notified that the, the public, you know, the, the passwords and the, well, the hashed passwords at least, um, and the login IDs and email addresses were released and they were published on the internet. So, of course, my Bitcoin had access to that immediately, if not before that. And when they, um, what's interesting about it is that every user that I have had any contact with, every single user, in fact, several of my friends included, who had an account on my, on, uh, my Bitcoin and Mt. Gox, um, if they used the same password, um, what happened is uh, my Bitcoin, their money was gone. All right. But they say their money was gone and it was their fault because they used the same password. And that's the easy, on the surface, obvious conclusion. But if you think it through, I always say TIT, think it through, and then think it through further. Think it through, okay? If you're a hacker and you break into a whole list of accounts on uh, my Bitcoin, for example, what is the probability that you would actually go into that account, steal all the money, and then take the extra time to change the password so that nobody can go in? What is the probability? I've asked people this randomly. I've asked all kinds of hackers and geeks and everybody. If a hacker went in and did that and stole your funds, what are the chances that they would actually take the extra time to change your password on you so you couldn't get in? First of all, first question. Most people say very, very slim, slim to none, 5%, 10%. I've never had anybody say more than like 20% chance that anyone would ever do that. It's just too time consuming. Um, well, guess what? You do your own research. You tell me, if you had the same password on Mt. Gox and my Bitcoin, when Mt. Gox got hacked and you lost access to your My Bitcoin account, what happened? Did you go and log in and it said invalid password? Or did you go and log in and it said your funds had been spent? Because I'll tell you what, from my experience and my communication, talking to my people, every single person, 100% of those people, their password had been changed. My Bitcoin password had been changed. Who changed it? You really think 100% of the hackers who hacked 100% of the accounts took the time to change their password? Okay, not likely. Nothing at mybitcoin.com adds up, including their own ledger numbers. I mean, that's, uh, you know, people believe that, that was, those numbers were pulled out of thin air, absolutely pulled out of thin air. Everything they say is pulled out of thin air. You know, I have emails from Tom Williams saying that he is in New Zealand and blah, 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 all kinds of things that we know for a fact are not true. So basically nothing that has ever come from mybitcoin.com has been true. You know, in the early days, they, they uh, had a thing on their website, an FAQ, how do we offer this service for free? And they said, and the FAQ used to say, uh, we offer this service because of uh, text ads. That's it. Yeah, we have like little text ads. It wasn't even Google AdWords. It was just their own little text ad that they sold, which was interesting because they sold, sold little text ads for all the other sites that are affiliated with my Bitcoins, like the same posse that own my Bitcoin. But anyway, they claim that these little text ads on the login screen is what paid for all the infrastructure and operation of mybitcoin.com. Of course, anyone with any sense knows that no. Running a site like mybitcoin.com is not cheap. I mean, if you, if you do it at all, I mean, much less if you do it right, there's a lot of expense involved. I mean, it's not nothing. It's a lot of money. So, I mean, most people could, you know, buy a house for what it costs to run a site like this. So the point is, they never charged anything, and they claimed that they were, prof they were actually running it from the proceeds of these little text ads. Well, <clears throat> I think what happened is people realized that 
that is absolutely absurd. There's no way, for the pennies that you would get for a text ad, there's no way that you could actually run a site like this. So in, you know, several months ago, they just took that off the FAQ and they just took off, they were, there are no text ads and they never even claimed that that was supporting them. I think they recognized the absurdity in what they were saying and people were seeing through it. So as people have started to see through their lies, um, they, they change their story, they change their story, they change their tune. And as you can see, from beginning to end, from the inception of MyBitcoin.com, emails that I received from them in November saying, you know, that they have a team of, you know, over 30 years of combined experience in online transaction processing and we're based in New Zealand and blah, 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 blah. I have all those emails, you know, that, uh, that my, my Bitcoin posse of little hackers uh, sent to me. And, um, you know, in which they use the same phraseology in many other places, connecting many other pseudonyms that they go by and many other websites that they operate. Um, and, you know, the Bitcoin police, so if you look at their wiki, I mean, they found out a lot of information. I mean, you know, not nearly as much as I know and other key people know, but the, the Bitcoin police of just the public, the public posse or the public, uh, you know, I guess you'd say vigilantes, uh, vigilante impromptu investigators have discovered a massive amount of information about, about these, uh, these little hacker boys who started this. And they're obviously, they think they're very smart and uh, they've made a life of crime early on or whatever and they think that they can just get away with it and the, the crime's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but um, they've gone too far. They've gone too far. You know, I, my guess is we're talking about hundreds of thousands of accounts and definitely in the millions of dollars, you know, people claiming that my account was the largest account. I'm not so sure that's even true. People who have a large amount of Bitcoins in mybitcoin.com are probably embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I was absolutely embarrassed to admit that I had trusted these clowns with that much money. It's, it really, really was stupid. And of course, in hindsight's 2020. But I'm sure anybody else who had that much or more is not going to come forward and say, yeah, guess what? I'm an idiot too. You know, like why? What's the point? Why would they do that? Um, people who are claiming they have the second largest account, you know, that's not, I don't believe it. Not for a second. I'm sure there are a lot of other large accounts on there, not just ours. And um, a lot, a lot, a lot of people had a lot of money on there and they're just like going, oh, well, what are you going to do? You know, you, you're just feeling defeated and what, what are they supposed to do? What are they going to do? Well, call the FBI, I guess. But, you know, they're, they're, and then they're very smart. Actually, they're very, very shrewd to suddenly claim, oh, man, we should have said it was like uh, the Polish exchange. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, we accidentally wiped out the wallets. No, 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 no. Let's do Mt. Gox, like Mt. Gox. We were hacked. That's right. Hackers hacked us. That's what it is. Hackers hacked us. And, and yeah, yeah, they got a percentage of the money and uh, we'll figure out later how much they got. And, and then uh, we'll do a claim form. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a claim form like Mt. Gox did, you know. Okay, whatever. I mean, to me, the whole entire thing is a sham. The reason I wanted to show you how to do this claim, though, is just in case, just in case, they're, they're still going to give you 49% of their money back. Um, so I suggest that you do file a claim, and I suggest that you let me know if you got your money back. And even more importantly, let me know if you did not get your money back. If you filled out a claim form and it been, it's been more than 48 hours from, from the time you filled out your claim form, I want you to email me. Send an email to email at, well, send it actually to bitcoin at onlyonetv.com. Bitcoin at onlyonetv.com and let me know that you filled out a claim form and 48 hours later you did not get your money back. I want to know about it. I want to know exactly how many people that happened to. Uh, and we're going to talk about that. You know, we're not going to just get... 50 or well 49% of what is ours and let thieves steal 51% of what is ours and I'm not talking about my money I'm talking about your money the community's money look at look at you know we're going to let people get away with this is this what bitcoin is about we're going to let thieves steal 51% of the people's money and then just say oh well and you know at least I got that back no 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 that is, that will not do that will not do. So um, let me take a moment really quick to, to thank the sponsors because obviously if it weren't for our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to bring you the news and the events and happenings in Bitcoin land. Um, but uh, Mt. Gox is actually the, uh, 
the number one exchange site, obviously the largest online exchange service for Bitcoins in the world, vast majority market share, something like 90% still. Um, in spite of everything they've been through, they are resilient, they're here to stay for the long term. Um, very, very honest, trustworthy guys. And now they're set up for euros and uh, British pounds, Australian dollars, Canadian dollars, all these foreign currencies. Um, the euro is coming now that they've acquired Bitomat, as you know. Uh, so they'll have a European exchange in euros there. Uh, the Mt. Gox mobile app, we've already interviewed Andrew Lee and talked all about this uh, Mt. Gox mobile app, which we're going to be talking about in uh, future episodes here in a minute of all kinds of new stuff coming on that front but it allows you to use Bitcoins on the go from your mobile phone or Android, any Android device or even a jailbroken iPhone i device. Um, and UBC, I'm sorry, UBKey, UBKey USB. Is that a tongue twister? UBKey USB security device. It gives you um, two-factor authentication, and which is really, really, really important because, um, as I've pointed out before, if you're a non-technical person, which, let's face it, most people are not technical enough to really be trusted with, with this, you know, they're handling their Bitcoins and their wallet file. Even super, super technical people have lost a lot of Bitcoins because they, you know, make one false step and they accidentally wipe out their Bitcoin. So the advantage to using Mt. Gox with the YubiKey is that the wallet file is never, ever on your device. It's never on your computer. Mt. Gox has got it, okay? Um, and they can be trusted because they have a huge profit incentive. They're very, very profitable. They're making money, and I encourage you to check that out too. You, what you want in an, an exchange or an e-wallet service is you want somebody who has a face and a name, and you've seen them on my show, and they, they put their face out there and their name and their address, and you know who they are, first of all. Secondly, they are profitable. If they're profitable, they have an incentive to stay around, to stay in business, to invest in security, and to be here, you know, not just to take the coins and run and say, oh, we were hacked, we might give you half of it back, you know, no, no, no. Um, or just, oops, we wiped, wiped out all your money, sorry. You know, <laughs> sorry, my bad, lost all your money. Um, they have a profit motive to stay around. But the other thing, besides the fact that your wallet is not on your machine, it's, it's trusted by, behind their, you know, their site, um, is the YubiKey USB uh, two-factor authentication. What that means is you get a little teeny tiny little fob that is on your keychain, literally a physical thing on your keychain, and you have to plug it in to a USB port in order to log on. I mean, at first it just sounds cool and clever, but if you think about it, the problem with logging onto websites is, any website, is these keyboard capture viruses. People don't understand. These keyboard capture viruses actually steal every letter you type on the screen. So they will steal your password to Mt. Gox or anything else. But the YubiKey gives you a password that's only good for one or two seconds. So if that keyboard capture thing captures the password, it's useless. So it actually doesn't matter how many viruses you have on your machine, you can still securely use Mt. Gox with a YubiKey, even if you used a public kiosk at the lobby of the hotel and it's, got, it's full of viruses and keyboard capture log, it won't be able to do anything because it can't log onto your account again. That password's only good for a couple seconds. So, um, Mt. Gox, we really thank the, them, obviously, for their support and their uh, service to the Bitcoin community. And BitPay. BitPay is a, uh, the new kid on the block when it comes to transaction processing. They are a, a merchant processor for Bitcoin. So if you have a website, um, whether it's a real sophisticated website where you've already got a, a, you know, some sort of advanced shopping cart integration you know, built in, BitPay integrates with that. Or you could just be somebody who set up a blog on WordPress or something and you want to sell t-shirts and mugs or some kind of products or something or services, whatever it may be, even tickets to events. You can actually just plug in this widget and it's literally, I can do it. I did it on a previous episode, as you may have seen. You would literally just copy this little HTML and just paste it right into any page and now you have an item with a pay with Bitcoin checkout button. It's basically like Google checkout or PayPal checkout or something like that, but it's specific to Bitcoin. They accept Bitcoin and only Bitcoin. Now they can pay the merchant in US dollars or Bitcoin, it's up to you. They can actually convert it to uh, dollars for you. But from the customer, this button accepts Bitcoin only. So you have to use another type of process if you want other than Bitcoin. You know, you can use, you can still use it in conjunction and have a couple buttons. You could have Google Checkout, PayPal, and Bitcoin. Or in my case, it's Bitcoin only. Bitcoin or forget it. We're not going backwards. So, um, but they allow you to accept payments in Bitcoin and super simple, easy to integrate with your website. It even generates QR codes 
so that you can have a QR code on the screen. Um, you know, obviously you can do it through your phone. I mean, anything. You can even have um, a printed, you know, menu or some sort of a, a printed thing and laminated. Uh, if you're in a brick and mortar store, you could even have like little price tags on every item in the sh a shelf of a physical brick and mortar boutique. And you could just walk around with your phone and go beep and scan every QR code of the things you want and check out with paying with Bitcoin and boom, an order is printed at the, at the cashier. So it could be used in retail brick and mortar point of sale. It could be used in um, restaurants where the menu that literally the physical menu has QR codes and you could actually order with your phone or your iDevice or whatever, you know, and uh, literally place your order and then pay with Bitcoin. So your order is, is placed and paid for and everything without even having the server come to your table. I mean, there's so many things, not to mention, obviously, everything you can do online, all kinds of um, web commerce. So it's a brilliant, brilliant tool, very innovative and so easy to use, even I can use it. So we thank BitPay, it's, and it's, by the way, it's called BitPay, but it's bit-pay, B-I-T hyphen P-A-Y dot com, BitPay. And Mezzy Grill, we love Mezzy Grill. Everybody knows Mezzy Grill. <laughs> They've gotten more publicity than any other restaurant on planet Earth, I think. Um, because why? Because they're the world's first bit brick and mortar restaurant, if there is any other kind. They're the world's first restaurant that accepts Bitcoin. So they're right here in Manhattan. And um, our friend Marwan owns uh, Mezzy Grill, and we love him to death. He's been a guest on the show. And um, in addition to that, it's our favorite restaurant. That's how we met him. Um, it's one of our favorite places to go in the city. Um, super affordable, super healthy, delicious food. You will not leave hungry and you won't leave broke. I mean, it's, it's really affordable. For Manhattan pricing, it's insane. It's so cheap and really, really healthy. Um, as a, uh, the ingredients are as organic and locally grown and all that as he can possibly find. Um, and the food is absolutely delicious. They not only accept Bitcoin, and have breakfast, lunch, and dinner open seven days a week. Now they actually sell Bitcoin. You can go in there, give them cash, and buy Bitcoin. Um, now there's a limit. It's only $1,000 per day per person. Like, you know, how, many, how much do you need? Come on. $1,000 a day per person, 6% of the fees. The, the limit is not negotiable. The fees are not negotiable. Don't try and negotiate it. This is, this is a retail point of sale. If you think they should you know, do better on the rates or the fees or the, you know, whatever, and it's, it's also based on Mt. Gox last price. So if you want to negotiate, then go somewhere else. Go to BTC near me or something. But if you just want a convenient thing and you want to go in and buy Bitcoin, you can do it seven days a week, every hour that they're open. Uh, but don't bother them with trying to negotiate a better rate. If you think a better rate should be provided, then you open your own retail establishment and you sell Bitcoin across the street. There's a lot of room for competition, but we give them all the credit for being the first restaurant to accept Bitcoin and the first brick and mortar uh, retail store that we know of that actually sells Bitcoin seven days a week, long, long hours every day. They're only three blocks south of Columbus Circle. So when you're in Manhattan, if you live here, you're visiting, you go to Columbus Circle, very famous landmark, southwest corner of Central Park, and literally three short blocks south on the left-hand side, Meze Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com to check out their menu. And Cablesaurus.com. Cablesaurus is um, a new sponsor. They, are, they have quality, fast shipping. They specialize in mining gear uh, for the gamers and PC supplies shipped directly from the U.S. wherever you are with free shipping available on most items. They, um, they have uh, you know, all sorts of things like uh, PCIe extender cables in a variety of sizes, GPU graphics cards and PSU power supplies, dummy plugs, riser converter cards, uh, dual PSU cables, watt meters, all sorts of things, mining gear. So you want to get into mining and you want to get your gear, support somebody who accepts Bitcoin. Cablesaurus.com is what it's called. They have thousands of satisfied customers in the Bitcoin community and they accept, uh, they've been accepting Bitcoin payments um, as well as dollars. So uh, cable source, it's like dinosaurs, it's um, cable, C-A-B-L-E-S-A-U-R-U-S.com, cable source. We thank them very much for supporting the, um, the community, Only One TV, and The Bitcoin Show, and bitbrew.net. This is, uh, and by the way, it's .net, not .com, it's bitbrew, B-I-T-B-R-E-W.net. Bitbrew is Ed's favorite coffee. It's actually everybody's favorite coffee around here. Um, Ed's like a coffee connoisseur, and he ordered some of this a long time ago, and um, 
it, uh, they actually sent him more than he ordered. They were very, very sweet, and um, he's totally hooked on it. All of us are. This is the only thing we drink. This is the official coffee of Only One TV. Um, and that was before they became a sponsor, okay? <laughs> Make it clear. It, this has always been the, the official co uh, coffee of Only One TV. And uh, now they're a sponsor, so we really, really welcome them. You know, we love it when, um, when we have a product or a service that we are in love with, and then they want to be a sponsor. We love that because it's easy. I can just, you know, I can just tell you the truth, which I do anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, they have all kinds of coffee. They're uh, roasted to order to guarantee fresh, the freshest product possible. Um, they have organic and fair trade coffees, as well as rare and exotic high-end varieties, like Jamaican Blue Mountain, not a blend, Darwinian Delight uh, from the Galap Galapagos Island Estate. Oh my gosh, this is like really exotic, right? Um, it's, it's like uh, coffee can be like wine or something, you know, you can be a real co coffee connoisseur. Whole bean or ground to order. Um, they ship internationally at a flat rate. Everything is sold exclusively for Bitcoins and uh, they use static Bitcoin pricing. So that's really cool, really cool. Give them a lot of credit for that. So thank all of our sponsors. And uh, as always, um, that's basically an update for now on the uh, My Bitcoin claim process. Get your claim in. Um, if you have not received your 49% of your, of your money back from these people, uh, after it's been 48 hours, I want you to email me again, bitcoin at onlyonetv.com, all spelled out, bitcoin at onlyonetv.com, and let me hear from you. I really want to know what's going on with this. That's, you know, how I can gather information and share it with the community. Um, also, obviously, uh, the Bitcoin conference is happening right now. It's starting today. It's really exciting. People are getting in like two days early. People were arriving Wednesday, and we're going out and meeting and having drinks and stuff, and uh, people were out last night. And today is the official uh, beginning of it. Um, they had a lot of people were uh, oh crepes in Brooklyn this morning in Dumbo, and uh, I heard there was a big posse there. There was a big posse last night at Hudson Eatery, and uh, now everyone's arriving um, around noon today, which is like right now in two minutes. So uh, I can hear the buzz. People are arriving in the studio, and we're going to start doing studio tours right now. And they we're really, really psyched because this is the Bitcoin Conference, the world's first Bitcoin Conference and World Expo, 2011 NYC. And uh, we got some really cool t-shirts made. Um, so if you're here, you'll see that they're, they're going to be on sale uh, at the conference on Saturday. And they're really slick. I'm so happy with the design of it. They're really cool. And um, you'll actually be able to, you know, afterwards on the bitcoinconference.com site, don't, don't lose that URL, bitcoinconference.com, because even after the conference, I mean, during the conference, we're going to put links up there to the app. There's already a, a link to the iPhone and, uh, you know, smartphone app. It's free. So you can see a lot of the media and the videos and the audios and stuff from the conference will be accumulated there. And in addition to that, we are going to, after the conference, we're gonna have lots more media there, links and stuff, and lots of announcement about, announcements about future huge things to come, you'll see. And what else? Uh, oh yeah, products, like these t-shirts. You'll be able to order it. Even if you weren't here, you can say you were here. <laughs> you were here in spirit anyway, you saw it on video. So you can buy one of these t-shirts, and you know we're not trying to make money on the t-shirts, we're just trying to cover the cost and so forth, but um, you know, so for the, the same price as they are at the conference, plus a little bit for the shipping, um, we're going to take orders online, so you'll be able to actually buy the t-shirts online as well with Bitcoin. Probably uh, BitPay, of course, how else, right? So uh, that'll be, it'll be just a simple little button you'll click and you can order t-shirts in a variety of sizes and, they, and you'll see the design on there. It's so cool. So much is exciting happening and um, the conferences, I just know already, already, it's a fantastic success. And the success, as I've said in the forum, the success is not measured by the number of people. You, I've been to conferences with 250,000 people who are just boring, well, not 250,000 except Comdex, but you could go to a conference with, you know, 23,000 people and have it like the most boring experience you ever had in your life. But, you know, we could have a conference with what, however many people are going to be here, I don't really care. I don't care if it's 100 or 200 or 2,000, it doesn't matter. What matters is the quality of the minds that all over the planet that are coming together. These Bitcoin minds are just like, and I'm not saying mine, minds with a D. These minds are unbelievable. Oh my God, it so turns me on. I love talking to these smart people. I just love it. And the conversations that come out of it, we are in heaven. Everyone is so excited. They're just like a, 
a classroom full of little kids who were just told they're being taken to Disneyland. We're so psyched. Um, it's going to be hot. And the, the I happen to be privy to several announcements that I know are going to be made tomorrow morning. And uh, it's so exciting. A lot of press are going to be there. And uh, so anyway, be watching streaming on OnlyOneTV.com. And I've asked everybody who's coming, bring your own camcorder, video. I don't care if it's a VHS, whatever you got. Your camera phones, these little Evos and stuff that have 720p. and all, you know, I want everybody recording everything. I want everybody streaming everything. And I want it all recorded. We're going to put it all, you know, make sure that you get with Manny, Manny at OnlyOneTV.com, and uh, get that media and the links to all that media to Manny so he can send it to the, the, the guys who are developing the app so we can funnel all that media available so it's in the app and also so that it's linked to the BitcoinConference.com site. So we'll have it all there. And of course, we're going to be uh, you know, having it all on Only One TV as well. So when you go to OnlyOneTV.com, you'll click the live button. You'll see the live streaming. We're going to be basically streaming the whole entire conference the whole time. So anyway, until next time, thanks for joining us on The Bitcoin Show. See you soon.